Hey, B, what's going on, man? Well, this is a little segment of a television show. It's a special segment that comes right after the warning, which you just saw, but before the title, before the music crashes in oh, dramatically. You mean this? Hello, and uh, welcome to Rocks. I'm Jay, and I'm a guy. And uh, I'm B, I am also a guy, but, and, and we together are the hosts of this television program. Yes, we're on the job now, working our little jobs um, yes. here on this television show, presenting it for you, the home viewer. Rocks, actually, is the name of the show, and it's a very serious program which deals with a lot of topical um, things. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and we supply witty commentary. Yeah, like this, for example, what we're doing right now. We're talking um, because that's part of what we do for our jobs. And jobs is really what this episode is about, is head jobs, actually, or that's the title. As you've probably learned, and as I've certainly learned, most jobs suck really hard, and I hate them. Yeah, but uh, hopefully this week you'll be able to check out some jobs that don't suck, that are that are maybe a little more interesting. Head jobs. Now, we're not talking about jobs for potheads or, for that matter, blow jobs, the traditional meaning of head jobs, but uh, rather just jobs that for people's heads that make their heads feel good. Is there such a thing? Well, hopefully we'll see some of that this week on Rocks. <laughs> You're fired. <laughs> Oh, hey, what's going on? Cows. Yeah, uh, I'm, you've caught me in my undies. How Indiana of you. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, actually, I'm changing to get ready to uh, get on the job here and get to work with the show. But in the meantime, maybe we should start off showing you someone who, well, doesn't have a job right now. My brother. Hey, Alan. Yeah. Say what you, who you are and, and what you do. I'm Alan. I'm your brother. <laughs> right now, I'm hoping for a callback on a part-time, five fifty an hour job. Right. I have a college degree, and here I am hoping for a part-time, five fifty an hour job. <laughs> and I'm married, you know, and got the whole concept of a child to deal with. I, I gotta gotta keep that all in mind and look for a, a real job. So that kind of sucks. I I can't be considered part of of Generation X, I guess. You know, dreamers, actors or artists or directors or whatever, you know, that sort of thing. I'm the less interesting and uh, less uh, creative alternative to Generation X. I'm looking strictly for menial jobs. Right here in the middle of Bloomington, I am gonna offer my brother a job. You can be a camera operator on our show. We can't pay you, but you can be it. Hey, that sounds all right to me. All right, well, people often wonder what good we're doing for this community. Well, there you saw it. Hey, how's it going? Wow. I guess it's time to move on out here into the streets of Bloomington. Nice outfit. Thank you. I just got this new duds. Yes, we're taking off into the streets here because we wanted to stop by a few places where we used to work. Jobs that we used to hold. Anyway, we've got a friend named Jim. Yeah, yeah, and uh, we we thought we'd uh, we'd kick off with him because he has a rather interesting job, and uh, and he actually majored in this in college. So wow, he, he got a job in his major. That's hard to believe. Uh, are, you, are you doing funky shit like sixties? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Wow. It's MTV, man. So what's your job? What's your deal? Okay. Well, I write games for uh, Sega of America. Se well, actually, Sega Midwest, which is a subsidiary of Sega of America, which in turn is a subsidiary of Sega of Japan. I'm transcontinental. That's kanji, man. Programming is basically the implementation of artwork mm -hmm. in a game structure. Well, I've already written one game called World Heroes, and I suggest that you buy it because it just killed in the rating. Mm -hmm. Killed in the rating. Not to endorse anything. Right, right. Now I'm on to my next game, which I actually have a part in designing, which is real exciting. It's called Aftershock. It's going to be on the new Sega system, which will be out this November, which everyone should buy because it's only 150 bucks as opposed to Nintendo, because <laughs> Nintendo's crap anyway. It'll never go anywhere. 
This is starting to sound like endorsements for Sega. Well, it's more of an it's paying my paycheck. <laughs> this is the new system. This is the 32X system. Oh, it's uh, beautiful. Well, it's going to be... I'd like to have one of those on my right. kitchen table. <laughs> yeah. Actually, you got to keep it in your garage. I can sleep until 9, get up at 9.30, be here by 10, and be out of here by 5.30. Plus, we get an hour for lunch. Work gets done, but it happens in creative spurts. But a lot of times, you're just kind of hanging out and having a good time and trying to pass ideas along to each other. The reason I work is because I like... Well, I do this stuff on my own anyway, I might as well get paid for it. As far as what it means to me, it means an income. I don't know, I, I like games, I like programming, it just kind of happened. Jim, what's your current salary now? Um, well, geez, with I, bonuses I, and all that? With bonuses, let's work it out on the monitor. That's what I'm making, roughly. Oh, I'm 24. Oh, really? I'm an old man in the industry. You live with your parents, right? I still live with my parents, but I have a considerable amount of money saved. Joe, don't make any smart-ass comments about me living at home. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Asshole. Um, I'll give you my internet address. It's J-A-M-T-R-E-I-C at symbol M-C-S dot com. So, uh... You're you seeing can, it on the screen. Yeah, here's another thing I do to pass the time. Tip tube through the tubes in the garden chance to really make fun of you in any sort of Yeah, way. yeah, so I guess you can spank me or whatever you want. Uh, All right, so Jim is going to spank me. Wait, um, this, is, my, uh, this is Pula Divisio. Yeah. Okay, is the autofocus off? Um, or, you know what, I'm not wearing my glasses. Uh, <laughs> Bad Joe, watch out Joe, I'll <laughs> accidentally get your balls. <laughs> I don't know um, if you've accidentally been... Well, that was exciting, yeah. um, let me tell you. And uh, <laughs> with that in mind, we'll show you this. So I used to work up there here in the Indiana Memorial Union. It's the largest student union in the country. And uh, I used to work here in the marketing department. Marketing? <laughs> I used to write ads for this fine university, for, oh. for the buses and stuff. I was actually going through my stuff the other day, and I found a, a scribble pad that I had been working on, um, talk, uh, just different slogans for the bus system. And uh, one of them I came up with was, our buses are dirty, the co they cost too much, and uh, we hate you. Fuck you. So let's go inside this fine union and check it out. Gosh, I kind of wish I'd taken the elevator. We're up here on the fifth floor. Marketing services. Wow. It's locked, actually. They've locked me out because they know what a dangerous fool I am. The great thing about it was, uh, was that I got to sit around and kind of doodle a lot because uh, I was supposed to be creative and, you know, creativity comes in spurts, or at least that's what I told my boss. <laughs> so yeah, working for the university, living off the fat of the brain of the land, so to speak. Uh, actually, here to tell you about one of those other cushy uh, university type jobs is Jenny B. This is my first official Indiana University appointed staff position ID. Hi, I'm Jenny and I work here at the uh, library as an acquisitions coordinator. I work with a lot of books and uh, I'd like to show you about this uh, job. Um, it's uh, hefting books around. Um, putting them from the stored shelves um, onto a book truck. Yeah, and then I push it back to where I, my workstation. And then, um, you know, this has great acoustics in here. I, saw, yeah. I sing a lot. And then, um, I sit at a workstation and books on another shelf. And it's also a wonderful way to like accidentally find um, books that you'd never like think of, like weird theories that, you know, you, you see, I see all the new theories that come through the literature. And so uh, working at the university may be um, different than working in a restaurant and dealing with the public um, and all that stuff. 
it's cushy, as Jay had pointed out. I'm happy though right now because my um, my um, lifestyle doesn't really dictate that I should earn more money. So I'm happy where I am right now. But you know what? I want to build a new atrium for the library. I want to build a huge like Trump Tower. If I ever get rich, I'm gonna like make this big thing for the library because I just like it so much. So, uh, as you can see, we're out of battery, but never fear. We're stealing electricity from the university itself uh, because we are here still in the Indiana Memorial Union, the largest student union in the world, right here. Can you believe it? Yep. It's amazing. So we're here at the Wittenberger Auditorium, named after uh, John M. Wittenberger. You have all these guys here, and they have things named after them, and they hang out here. They do their thing. They get their picture put up on the wall, and they get a paycheck for that. So the first thing when I was a student at Indiana University was I came to this auditorium and there was a guy got up on stage and said, what you need to do here at Indiana University is find out what you like doing and then find a way to get paid for doing it. He <laughs> said, I'm into frogs myself and I go down to South America twice a year and hunt frogs in the Amazonian rainforest and you, the taxpayer, pay me to do that. Do what you want and the money will come. We're here, we're doing our thing, uh, and we're waiting for the money to come. We are waiting. It's a great philosophy to live by. Um, we're just not quite sure when the paycheck's gonna come, but nonetheless, we persevere. And here's another guy who perseveres in that same way. Uh, my name is Terry Whitefeather and I do all sorts of things. I'm the, a main wizard. I'm a wizard here in Bloomington, Indiana. Okay, my okay. typical day. Yeah. Okay, here's, here's my typical day. In fact, uh, my typical day is usually never typical, but um, lately it's been typical, which is kind of atypical. But my typical day is getting up in the morning and going to build my bioshelder, because I'm building this bioshelder that has closed ecology life support system and runs off solar and wind and all that, and recycles everything. So I do that for like many hours until I have to rush in here to look like this, you know? And then I work in the eye and I sell weird books like things like on fuel saving and, you know, Arco Santi and don't do it in your backyard and, and all these weird things. So then I hang out in here and these people come in through that door over there and walk around sometimes in a daze, sometimes they know what they're doing. And they come in and they look around until they find things that they like or wonder about and then I answer questions and stuff. Things well, the things that are really hard to do is when people come in here looking for cosmic guidance. <laughs> okay, that's actually, that's not so bad if they're looking for cosmic guidance and ask me, I'm willing to give it, I really am. But, but, they usually don't want to hear it because the cosmic guidance is usually like, wash the dishes, what are you worried about this stuff for? They really do want demons and fire from their fingertips. <laughs> <laughs> we don't make a lot of money, we're kind of like, uh, just your like typical Bloomington worker, you know, that kind of gets by on somewhere just above minimum wage. But sometimes we're just like poor. People walk in and go, can you buy these pipes please? We don't have any money to give them, so we don't. The meaning of a job, it ha has to have meaning. If I'm not doing something that's really kind of like meaningful to me a little bit, like like I feel like I'm uh, not making just money. I mean, that's like, you know, make some money. But something where I feel like I'm helping somebody, helping someone else, it's really important. The bottom line is if my life isn't contributing to the, the life of this planet, then I'm a parasite on it and should probably be removed the largest student union in the whole fucking country, the whole world, I think, or something like that. And yet right outside next to it, we have a cemetery. Because, of course, the uh, what comes right after being a student is death. But there is a reason that we're here. Um, it's, uh, it's, what is it? Oh, I can't remember. Oh, jobs. We're talking about jobs. Yeah, your, we were- Your job. My job, yeah. I'm a bartender. It's, it's kind of what I have uh, picked up. I was saying that before that uh, I do what I like and hope that the money will come. Well, I'm a bartender and, and that's what I do and, and that's what I'm doing or about to do. Yeah, but no ordinary bartender you. <laughs> no, no, because of course I'm going to mix a drink in a cemetery. So here goes. Stone. I'm a glass, doesn't matter what 
size Fill it halfway with the pieces I like Cause jet, it's cold and booze keeps you frisky So pick out a bottle of some Tennessee whiskey Pour it in a glass about an ounce, I'd say Maybe a bit more to keep the demons away bartender, a hard-working bartender. It's that Protestant work ethic that uh, I learned here in the churches that uh, that formed my youthful um, mind. Yes, they bespeckle this yeah. part of the country. The Protestant work ethic. Now there is a concept, and here to tell you more about that is B. Yes, this is a, a serious educational program, and this week we're going to try to get our fingers around the slippery concept of the Protestant work ethic. And actually it's not that hard. The basic idea is this. Pleasure is bad, and even if you have a stupid, meaningless job, if you just work really hard at it, that is a virtue. Of course, we being the, uh, the young, iconoclastic rebels that we are, we question these prefabricated values that are handed down to us from on high. And um, we wonder, you know, we scratch our heads right here on television, yeah. never Watch mind the, the flakes, flakes yeah. and uh, wonder, are things really that simple? And isn't job meaning maybe one of the most important things that there could be in life? And, and as a matter of fact, here's somebody to talk about a very meaningful job. I'm Linda, and those two are my kids. The one in yellow is KJ Ospud. He's seven. And the one in red is Stephanie. Ooh, she's four and a half. We spend a lot of time together. Oh, some people say too much time. We wake up, we eat together, we do activities together, and we learn together. Learn. Homeschooling. Yes, I'm the teacher. I don't like schools because it creates peer pressure. And like all of us growing up, having to go to schools, we have to deal with that. We have to deal with what to wear, how to be in the in crowd, what to eat, all those things. And if we're different, gosh, we get outcast. It's funny, if you're in school, you have to be in school, and if you decide that you don't want to be in school even for one day, then, you call this, then you're a truant. But if you're at home school, you don't have that. You can take a day off, or you can take the whole afternoon off, and you learn at your own pace. Because if you don't feel like sitting at home, well, let's go for a walk, right? Yeah. Let's go in the woods, or let's go ride a, in a canoe, let's be on the lake. Or let's go ice skating. Let's go ice skating. Yeah. We decided to teach our kids this. Reading, writing, arithmetic, music, and sports. What's seven times seven? Seven times seven, 49. Ask oh. another one, Jay. What's six times eight? Six times eight, 48. When Dave and I decided to have kids, we decided to take care of our kids the best that we know how. And the best that we know how is giving them the best possible education that they can get. I want them to have the best possible opportunity to do whatever they want. If they want to be a hockey player, a soccer player, hockey, soccer. a piano player, a bicycle rider, anything. Are you glad that you're being homeschooled? Yep. I'm glad a lot. Yeah, well, we just went into having fun as much as possible. Well, some Christians just kicked us out of the temple, so we're going to go hide in the woods. God, I love this university. I mean, where else can you have a woods on campus yep. other than Indiana University? Yeah. And, and where else can you maintain an extended adolescence as we have in this town? Ah, uh, here are the bells chiming in the background. Yep. We Time slips away, but yet we persist 
with this same old, same old crap. Yeah. Anyway, arson. Now there's a sexual crime for you if there ever was one. Yeah, and here to tell you more about that is Chris, a professional arsonist. So what's that orange tape for? For her gags. This is called a drip torch. It's got a mixture of diesel and uh, gasoline in there. And what happens is the fuel comes over here and goes through there, and this is going to be on fire, fire, and then the fuel goes across the fire and gets lit, and little drops of fire fall on the leaves and start the fire. When you're out doing a burn and it gets really hot and you get really hungry and tired, you should try a macaroo bar. Macaroo bar. We do not mean to endorse any products, but this is a macaroo bar. And if you'll note the price, oops, upside down, everybody. Macaroo bar. Macaroo bar. If you'll notice the price, 25 cents, certainly in anybody's budget. Macaroo for a burner that really knows how to burn, and when he gets hungry, he really knows how to eat. So why, you may ask, is this asshole going through the forest burning things down? Well, it's part of his job, actually. Yeah, actually, he's a nature lover. Yeah, yeah. He works for the Nature Conservancy, which is kind of a, a group that buys land and takes care of it. And burns shit down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's apparently a good thing to, to burn forests occasionally to, to keep the cycle going, yeah. so to speak. So if you've got something to burn at home, <laughs> we suggest you do it right now. The Daily Grind here, it's a coffee house here in Bloomington. I used to work here, it was my college job here when I was still a student. Wow, yeah. Bohemia. Yeah, yeah, working in a coffee shop. The quintessential college student Bohemian slacker job or something. Anyway, to, to talk more about those kind of jobs, here's Worm. Was that a segue? For yeah, yeah. <laughs> really loud here like when you got this going and you got this thing going here mm -hmm. and you got this thing steaming away you know things just can get really really loud in here what what huh you can see that we we keep trying to keep things really clean back here um usually we have all this stuff stored away and everything and you can tell that this place is really conducive to short people yeah <laughs> i can uh reach all the things i'm meeting in just a second mm -hmm. hey we should talk to dave yeah. Hi Dave! He is the life bread and blood of this establishment and uh, he's the guy that makes everything. He makes all the pastries from scratch. You can see he's making croissants right now. You see the multi-layer, the layer stratus. You know, we live in a stratified world of different jobs and like customer and servant. I don't know, sometimes it gets kind of annoying because people get real snotty and shitty with you. These are our testicle squeezers um, for the... Uh, for the really annoying customers that uh -huh. come in. Some people who are really like annoying and pretentious come in and ask for a mocha. Mm -hmm. Now, if when you ask for a what mocha, is a mocha? Yeah, what is right. a mocha? We don't know. It depends on what part of the country you come in, depends on where you go. In town it could be different things. Mm -hmm. Then there's a borgia. Then there's a what chocolate cappuccino. Yeah. We don't serve borgias here. Yeah. Chocolate yeah. cappuccinos. With whipped cream. And then that's I guess that's a mocha or maybe a mocha is like a latte with chocolate. But actually mocha's not even necessarily chocolate. It's just a flavor of coffee, which can be really confusing, and, and those people who come in and ask for a mocha and they get real pissy when we don't know what they're talking about, we can't read their mind. I just like to say, fuck you. <laughs> oh my goodness, a rush on the counter. We've got the Bean Master right here! The boss! The bean Master! Look, oh my god. Wow, doesn't he look like a coffee guy? <laughs> It's a religious experience. Hey, where'd you get that fucking scar on your cheek? Actually, that's the next point of discussion here is one problem with some of these jobs that we've been talking about. Part-time jobs, do-it-yourself jobs, work at home, all these different things, you know. They may uh, allow you to live that fun and interesting, wacky, weird, strange lifestyle but they probably don't have uh, a lot of really good benefits, health benefits, mm -hmm. health insurance, for uh, example. Mm -hmm. And um, to help explain more about stuff like this is the love of my life, Christy Paxson. Hello. My husband, Bart Neverson, otherwise known as B, recently suffered from an epileptic seizure that he had had. It was 5.30 in the morning and suddenly I felt a jolt 
in bed and I started looking at it and Bart was back there making some sort of motions and frankly I thought he was jacking off. <laughs> and I thought, God, five thirties aroused, oh well, you know, whatever. Yeah. So you tried to help him. I was a little concerned out. that he didn't seek my aid, but you know, hey, it's, it's a free country. Well anyway, I he falls off the bed and I thought, well that's you know, that's a little bit more mm -hmm. than an orgasm. <laughs> In fact it was a seizure. So there he was on the floor, and he was just flailing about wildly with all of his synapses gone amok, mm -hmm. and things were happening in a whirl. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to pull on his feet to get him back down because he was bumping his head on the side of the end table. So, But now, everything's fine. Until the next time. B did suffer quite a bit during that seizure. He, had, he was chewing on the side of his mouth. He was going... Because <laughs> he was chewing, and the insides of his mouth were all chewed up, and there was blood coming out, and he was oh, <laughs> going like that, and so there's blood spurting everywhere. Mm -hmm. It stained the carpet, which I was really pissed off about. <laughs> and then the dude barfs in the sink, which has now clogged <laughs> our sink up. But, you know, at least it wasn't all over the place where I had to clean it up. I mean, I feel sorry for him and everything, but God, you know. <laughs> Wow. Oh my god, this is crazy. You're talking to your mail. I'm talking to my mailbox. Isn't That's this exciting? What is going on? <laughs> is there someone in there? <laughs> or someone or something. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Very unusual. Well, so while people talk to their mailboxes, I'm going to check mine, see what's in here. Oh, there's a letter. A letter to us here at Rocks. Maybe they'll tell us how we can get a job. A letter sent in by one of our faithful viewers here on Rocks. This is uh, from Indiana University. Wow, how appropriate. Was, was not, huh? Goodness gracious. Well, let's see what it, what they have to say here. Uh, goodness gracious, it's taking me a little time to open it. Oh, hey, 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 hey. Wow. Whoa, all right. Oh, look, it's Thomas Jefferson, and he's saying, Rock's vocabulary department. My real name is the Buttermilk Kid, and I want to know, what is the plural of Moose Lodge? <laughs> wow, goodness gracious. Well, um, for 20, I guess that's a $20 question then. Um, gosh, I guess it would probably be Meese Lodges or Moose Lodges. I'm, hmm, I'm not sure. Yeah, you know, it's, it's funny. A lot of people, uh, when, I, when I meet people who've watched this television program, they ask, so how do you do it? How are you able to make money? How are you able to put food on the table and pay the rent doing a cable access television program? And the sad truth of the matter is that um, we rely on the support of the community. People like this who write in and send us money. That's the only paycheck that we get. And uh, you should also note that we can't ask you to send us money. That's yeah. the beauty of it. You yeah. watch this television program, and it's free, and there isn't anybody who can stop you from watching it as long as you pay the cable company. They're the people who are getting rich. Yeah, yeah. Um, We're just sitting here being lowly program providers, trying to uh, trying to make ends meet as best we can, and this certainly helps. Yeah, but if you have some extra money lying around the house that uh, you'd like to send our way, well, we just can't ask you to do that. I'm afraid it's against the rules. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that address on the screen is, is only for uh, uh, officially, you know, we can only accept um, letters, or we can only ask you to send letters. Well, actually, we can, the, the rules of value. specifically state nothing of value. So if you were to send us an interesting letter that we liked a lot, that might have value to us. So please, yeah. only send us your most boring shit and nothing yeah. else. Yeah. We beg of you. Anyway, I guess that means that we're uh, taking off for the, the week, but we'll be back next week with a very special episode. So if you like that television show that you just saw, you might be intrigued to know it's just one in a series of television shows that we've been producing since 1992. Uh, Rocks, actually, is the name of the series. And you can find out more about it and us at rocks.com. Uh, maybe even get in touch with us. Maybe even get involved in the production of a future episode of Rocks. Anyway, we'd love to hear what you think. And uh, we hope that you'll tune in next week 
to watch another episode of Rocks here on Free Speech TV.